The ancient Phoenician city-state located in present-day Tunisia was one of the most influential civilizations in the Mediterranean world. Founded around the 9th century BCE by Phoenician settlers from the city of Tyre, Carthage flourished into a powerful empire that rivaled Rome for dominance in the region. Situated strategically on the North African coast, Carthage became a significant maritime and commercial hub, controlling vast territories across the Mediterranean through its extensive trade networks. The origins of Carthage can be traced back to the Phoenician expansion in the Mediterranean during the first millennium BCE. The Phoenicians, renowned sailors and traders, established colonies and trading posts along the coasts of North Africa, Sicily, Sardinia, and Spain. Carthage, initially a small trading outpost, grew rapidly in importance due to its favorable location and access to valuable resources such as timber, metals, and agricultural products. As it expanded, Carthage developed into a major power in the region, eventually becoming the dominant force in the Western Mediterranean. The origins of Carthage can be traced back to the broader Phoenician expansion in the Mediterranean during the first millennium BCE. The Phoenicians, a Semitic-speaking people originally from the coastal region of present-day Lebanon, were renowned for their maritime skills and trading prowess. Around the 9th century BCE, Phoenician merchants and sailors began to venture beyond their homeland, establishing colonies and trading posts along the coasts of the Mediterranean Sea. Driven by a desire for new trade opportunities and access to valuable resources, the Phoenicians embarked on ambitious voyages, reaching as far west as the Iberian Peninsula and as far east as Cyprus and Anatolia. These maritime expeditions laid the foundation for the establishment of Phoenician colonies and trading outposts, which played a crucial role in facilitating trade and cultural exchange throughout the Mediterranean region. Carthage, the most renowned of the Phoenician colonies, was founded around 814 BCE by settlers from the Phoenician city of Tyre, located in present-day Lebanon. According to ancient sources, including the Greek historian Herodotus and the Roman historian Diodorus Siculus, the legendary queen Dido, also known as Alyssa, led the expedition that established Carthage. Legend has it that Dido fled Tyre following a power struggle with her brother Pygmalion and arrived on the shores of North Africa, where she negotiated with the local Berber chieftains for land to establish a new settlement. The site chosen for Carthage was strategically located on a peninsula jutting into the Mediterranean, offering natural harbors and access to maritime trade routes. The city's name, Carthage, is believed to derive from the Phoenician term, Kart Hadasht, meaning, New City. In its early years, Carthage rapidly developed into a thriving commercial center, benefiting from its strategic location and the expertise of its Phoenician founders. The city's economy was primarily based on maritime trade, with Carthaginian merchants engaging in the exchange of goods such as textiles, metals, pottery, and agricultural products with other Mediterranean cultures. Carthage's influence extended beyond its immediate surroundings, as it established trade networks and diplomatic relations with neighboring regions. The city's commercial activities facilitated cultural exchange and the spread of Phoenician influence throughout the Mediterranean, contributing to the enrichment of Carthaginian society and the development of its distinctive culture. One of the key factors contributing to the success of Carthage as a trading empire was its strategic location along the North African coast. Situated at the crossroads of major trade routes in the Mediterranean, Carthage enjoyed easy access to both eastern and western regions, making it a prime center for commerce. Its proximity to Sicily, Sardinia, Spain, and other important territories allowed Carthage to control lucrative trade routes and establish a vast network of colonies and trading posts throughout the Mediterranean basin. Moreover, Carthage's mastery of maritime technology and navigation further enhanced its trading capabilities. Carthaginian sailors were renowned for their seamanship and navigational skills, allowing them to traverse long distances across the Mediterranean with relative ease. The development of advanced ship designs, such as the Trireme and Quinquermi, gave Carthage a significant advantage in maritime warfare and trade, enabling the empire to protect its commercial interests and expand its influence across the sea. At the heart of Carthage's prosperity lay its thriving trade and commercial activities. The Carthaginians engaged in a wide range of economic pursuits, including the exchange of goods, the establishment of trade routes, and the exploitation of natural resources. Carthage's economic strength stemmed from its control over key resources such as metals, timber, 
agricultural products, and luxury goods, which were in high demand throughout the Mediterranean world. The Carthaginians traded extensively with other civilizations, including the Greeks, Egyptians, Etruscans, and indigenous peoples of North Africa and Iberia. Through their network of colonies and trading posts, they facilitated the exchange of goods and ideas, fostering cultural exchange and economic interdependence across the Mediterranean region. Carthage's dominance in trade allowed it to amass considerable wealth and exert significant influence over the economies of neighboring states. Carthaginian society was characterized by a rigid class structure that reflected the empire's economic and social hierarchies. At the top of the social pyramid were the wealthy aristocrats and merchants who controlled the empire's commerce and political affairs. Beneath them were the middle class, comprised of artisans, craftsmen, and traders, who played essential roles in sustaining Carthage's economy and cultural life. At the bottom were the common people, including farmers, laborers, and slaves, who provided the labor force necessary for agricultural production and urban development. Despite its hierarchical nature, Carthaginian society was remarkably cosmopolitan and diverse due to its extensive trade networks and multicultural population. The city of Carthage itself was a melting pot of different cultures, languages, and ethnicities, with people from various regions of the Mediterranean coexisting and interacting on a daily basis. This cultural exchange enriched Carthaginian society, leading to the assimilation and adaptation of foreign customs, beliefs, and practices. In addition to facilitating economic exchange, Carthage's trade networks also served as conduits for the transmission of ideas, technologies, and artistic styles between different civilizations. The Carthaginians adopted and adapted cultural elements from their trading partners, contributing to the synthesis of a unique Carthaginian identity that blended Phoenician, North African, Greek, and other influences. Carthage was governed by an oligarchical system, where power was concentrated in the hands of a few wealthy families known as the oligarchs. These families, often referred to as the Hundred Families, held considerable influence over the affairs of the state and monopolized political power. The highest governing body in Carthage was the Carthaginian Senate, composed of members from the leading noble families. The Senate was responsible for making major policy decisions, enacting laws, and overseeing the administration of the city-state. In addition to the Senate, Carthage also had various councils and magistrates that assisted in the governance of the city. One of the most important councils was the Council of Elders, comprised of senior statesmen and former magistrates who provided advice and guidance to the Senate. Another key institution was the Assembly of the People, where citizens could voice their opinions and vote on important issues, although its powers were limited compared to the Senate. Carthage had a well-developed legal system that played a crucial role in maintaining order and resolving disputes within the society. The legal code of Carthage was influenced by Phoenician traditions and incorporated elements of customary law and religious principles. Judges, appointed by the Senate, presided over courts and administered justice according to the law. The city-state was divided into administrative districts, each governed by local officials responsible for taxation, law enforcement, and public services. These officials, appointed by the Senate, ensured the smooth functioning of the government at the local level. Religion held a central place in Carthaginian society, with various deities worshipped and revered by the populace. The most prominent deity in Carthaginian religion was Baal Hammon, the god of fertility and the heavens, whose cult was celebrated through elaborate rituals and sacrifices. Other important gods and goddesses included Tanit, the patron goddess of Carthage, and Melkar, the Phoenician equivalent of Heracles. Sacrifice was an integral aspect of Carthaginian religious practice, with both animal and human offerings made to appease the gods and ensure their favor. The practice of child sacrifice, particularly in times of crisis or war, has been a subject of controversy and debate among scholars. Carthage's expansion and dominance in the western Mediterranean brought it into conflict with the Greek city-states of Sicily and southern Italy. The Greek colonies, established centuries earlier, were prosperous and influential centers of trade and culture. Carthage's growing power posed a threat to Greek interests in the region, leading to frequent clashes and conflicts over control of lucrative trade routes and territories. The most notable conflict between Carthage and the Greek city-states occurred during the 5th century BCE, known as the Sicilian Wars. 
These wars were a series of conflicts fought between Carthage and the Greek city-state of Syracuse for control of Sicily. Despite initial setbacks, Carthage managed to establish a foothold on the island, challenging Greek dominance and leading to decades of intermittent warfare. The Sicilian Wars, spanning from the late 5th century BCE to the early 4th century BCE, were a defining period of conflict between Carthage and various Sicilian powers, primarily Syracuse. These wars were characterized by shifting alliances, naval battles, and sieges, as both sides vied for control of Sicily and its valuable resources. Carthage, with its superior naval strength and mercenary armies, initially gained significant territory in Sicily, establishing strategic footholds and alliances with local allies. However, the Greek city-state of Syracuse, under the leadership of figures like Dionysus I and Timoleon, mounted fierce resistance and eventually managed to push back Carthaginian forces, reclaiming lost territory and asserting its dominance in the region. The most famous and consequential conflict in Carthaginian history was the series of wars with Rome known as the Punic Wars. These wars, fought over the course of more than a century, were a struggle for supremacy in the Mediterranean between two powerful empires. The First Punic War, 264-241 BCE, erupted over disputes in Sicily and control of trade routes in the western Mediterranean. Carthage, initially the dominant naval power, faced off against Rome, which lacked significant naval experience. However, through innovation and determination, Rome managed to build a formidable fleet and ultimately defeated Carthage, gaining control of Sicily and other territories. The Second Punic War, 218-201 BCE, was ignited by the Carthaginian general Hannibal's audacious invasion of Italy, crossing the Alps with his army and inflicting devastating defeats on the Roman forces. Hannibal's campaign in Italy is one of the most famous military campaigns in history, but despite his victories, he was unable to deliver a decisive blow to Rome. The war ended with the defeat of Carthage at the Battle of Zama by the Roman general Scipio Africanus, resulting in severe terms imposed on Carthage by Rome. The Third Punic War, 149 to 146 BCE, was the final showdown between Carthage and Rome. Despite Carthage's efforts to appease Rome and rebuild its city, Rome viewed Carthage as a threat to its dominance in the Mediterranean and sought its complete destruction. After a long siege, Carthage fell to the Roman forces, and the city was razed to the ground, effectively ending the Carthaginian Empire and solidifying Rome's hegemony in the region. Hannibal Barca, one of the most renowned military leaders in history, was born in 247 BCE into the prominent Barcid family of Carthage. He was raised in an environment steeped in the traditions of military excellence and political ambition. Hannibal's father, Hamilcar Barca, was a distinguished Carthaginian general who had fought in the First Punic War against Rome. It was under his father's guidance that Hannibal began his military training and education. From a young age, Hannibal exhibited exceptional intelligence, strategic thinking, and leadership qualities. He accompanied his father on military campaigns in Spain, where he gained valuable experience in warfare and diplomacy. After the death of his father in 229 BCE, Hannibal assumed command of the Carthaginian forces in Spain at the age of only 26, demonstrating his natural aptitude for military command and his ambition to carry on his father's legacy. Hannibal's most famous military campaign was his invasion of Italy during the Second Punic War, 218-201 BCE, a conflict waged between Carthage and Rome for supremacy in the Mediterranean. In 218 BCE, Hannibal famously led his army, including war elephants, across the Alps into Italy, achieving one of the most daring and audacious military feats in history. His aim was to strike at the heart of the Roman Republic and weaken its hold on its Italian allies. Hannibal employed innovative and unconventional tactics throughout his campaign in Italy, including strategic maneuvering, surprise attacks, and psychological warfare. He won a series of stunning victories against the Romans at the battles of Trivia, Lake Trasimene, and Cannae, employing tactics such as double envelopment and the use of terrain to his advantage. Despite being significantly outnumbered, Hannibal's strategic brilliance allowed him to inflict heavy casualties on the Roman legions and keep them on the defensive for over a decade. Hannibal's military genius and his stunning successes against Rome have cemented his legacy as one of the greatest military commanders of all time. 
His tactics and strategies, studied by military leaders throughout history, continue to be analyzed and admired for their innovation and effectiveness. The Battle of Cannae, in particular, is often cited as a classic example of tactical brilliance and remains a subject of study in military academies around the world. Beyond his tactical prowess, Hannibal's legacy also lies in his ability to inspire loyalty and devotion among his soldiers. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks, his army remained fiercely loyal to him throughout his campaigns in Italy, a testament to his leadership and charisma. The Punic Wars, a series of conflicts between Carthage and Rome spanning over a century, had devastating consequences for Carthage. The First Punic War, 264 to 241 BCE, saw Carthage lose its Sicilian territories to Rome, while the Second Punic War, 218-201 BCE, witnessed the legendary exploits of the Carthaginian general Hannibal, who famously crossed the Alps to invade Italy but ultimately suffered defeat. The Third Punic War, 149 to 146 BCE, resulted in the complete destruction of Carthage as a political entity. Following the conclusion of the Punic Wars, Carthage was left weakened and vulnerable, stripped of its overseas possessions and military power. The terms of the peace treaties imposed by Rome imposed heavy reparations on Carthage, crippling its economy and exacerbating internal tensions. Internal strife and unrest further weakened Carthage in the years following the Punic Wars. The imposition of harsh conditions by Rome, along with resentment among the Carthaginian population towards the ruling elite, fueled discontent and rebellion. Revolts erupted within Carthage, as well as among its subject territories in North Africa and the Mediterranean. Moreover, rivalries among Carthage's leading families and factions intensified, leading to political instability and paralysis in governance. The once powerful oligarchy that had ruled Carthage became increasingly fragmented, as competing interests vied for control amidst the city's decline. In 146 BCE, Rome, viewing Carthage as a perpetual threat to its interests in the Mediterranean, launched a brutal assault on the city. The Roman general Scipio Aemilianus besieged Carthage for three years, subjecting its inhabitants to famine, disease, and relentless warfare. Despite desperate attempts at resistance, Carthage ultimately fell to the Roman onslaught. The destruction of Carthage was a cataclysmic event that marked the end of an era. The once great city was razed to the ground, its buildings demolished, and its fields salted to ensure that it could never again rise to challenge Rome's dominance in the region. Survivors of the siege were either killed or sold into slavery, and Carthage was reduced to a mere memory, its glorious past consigned to the annals of history. Carthage's interactions with Rome left a significant imprint on Roman civilization. The Punic Wars, fought between Carthage and Rome, shaped the course of Mediterranean history and ultimately led to Rome's rise as the dominant power in the region. The conflicts with Carthage exposed Rome to new military tactics, strategies, and technologies, which the Romans incorporated into their own military practices. Additionally, the conquest of Carthage and its territories provided Rome with access to valuable resources and territories, fueling the expansion of the Roman Empire. As a major trading power in the ancient world, Carthage played a crucial role in shaping Mediterranean trade routes and facilitating commerce between the various regions of the Mediterranean basin. The city-state's extensive trade networks connected the Mediterranean world, enabling the exchange of goods, ideas, and cultures across vast distances. Carthage's influence on trade routes persisted even after its decline, as the legacy of its commercial activities continued to shape the economic dynamics of the Mediterranean region. Carthage's cultural contributions and heritage left a lasting legacy in the Mediterranean world. The city-state was a melting pot of diverse cultures, languages, and traditions, fostering a vibrant cultural environment characterized by exchange and innovation. Carthaginian art, architecture, and craftsmanship influenced the artistic styles and techniques of neighboring civilizations, leaving behind a rich cultural legacy that continues to be studied and celebrated today. In addition to its artistic and architectural contributions, Carthage also made significant advancements in fields such as agriculture, navigation, and urban planning, which had a lasting impact on the development of Mediterranean civilization. The legacy of Carthage serves as a reminder of the interconnectedness of ancient societies and the enduring influence of cultural exchange and interaction in shaping the course of history. 
In conclusion, the legacy of Carthage is profound and far-reaching. Despite its eventual destruction at the hands of Rome, Carthage's influence on Mediterranean civilization endured long after its demise. Its contributions to trade, culture, and military strategy left an indelible mark on the ancient world and continue to shape our understanding of history today. Carthage serves as a reminder of the complexities of ancient civilizations and the dynamic interactions that shaped their development. Its rise and fall illustrate the fragility of power and the enduring impact of cultural exchange and conflict in shaping the course of human history. Ultimately, the story of Carthage is a testament to the resilience, ingenuity, and ambition of the human spirit. Though the city may have fallen, its legacy lives on, serving as a symbol of the enduring quest for power, prosperity, and greatness in the annals of history.